So I'm leaving this beautiful location today. It is a Monday and I need to get all these orders to a post office before five o'clock. So a lot of these orders this morning have been Christmas badges, so I'll give you a little show now. Some of them are a bit rude, so uh, but I'll just give you a little show what we've been making this morning. So we're on our way, we've left that lovely area. It was absolutely beautiful and it was great for a weekend to stay there. But Canada geese, they're so noisy, aren't they? Really, really noisy. But yeah, <laughs> so we're leaving them little buggers behind and we're cracking on, getting off. This is obviously some sort of fishing match going on here and I always hate it going through a fishing match. They have the massive long poles, huge long poles. And they leave them in right to the last minute till your bow's properly touching and then they whip it out. But yeah. Hopefully I've churned some fish up for them anyway. So that's the Broken Cross pub, one of my favourite pubs on the canal. Brilliant there. Love it. Put the big coat on. Big coat weather. It's a little bit industrial here. This we're going through now. What used to be ICI, which is now I think it's called Tata or Tater. But yeah, these are the factories now. But it's great to be going through all this industrial stuff as well. It's not very picturesque and you can't hear the birds. However, it's part of it all, isn't it? now and if you remember in one of my earlier videos for those that have watched them I was towing a sinking boat to here I towed a lovely lad called Mouse he'd just bought a boat I was having loads of problems with it and it was sinking so we managed to get him to here so it could be hauled out and get fixed up so that's the last time we were here So we've just moored up at the Salt Barge pub, absolutely amazing pub. We're only here for one night though, so we'll try and get in there later, but we'll have to see. But here we are, and Pudding's loving it. Pudding's having a bit of a flirt. He's found a dog off another boat. I don't know which boat it's from, <laughs> but Pudding's flirting. Girl, you flirting, Pudding? Eh? Isn't it? What's your name? Oh, I think she's lost her voice. You lose your voice from barking. How are you? Hey up, guess what we're gonna do now? I'm gonna clean my fire out. Yeah, my flu needs a good sorting, so let's crack on with that. But before we do, let's give a big shout out to this week's pirate crew. Arr. Stuart and Carol, Chief Vince, Marcy and Nelson, Catherine Scoof, Scoof, Stephen Brody, James Flynn, Ralph Wood, Ted and Sonia, PK and Les, Nick Green, Alan Harbit, M Smith, Tyne. Tinya, Jane and Dave and Keith. Thanks so much guys. So before we start, we need to get some newspaper on the floor to protect it. I use a towpath top from the nearest Chandler's. So the first thing that we need to do guys is get the old gloves on because it's a dirty job this is and I'm gonna double glove as well because uh, there's nothing worse than it popping when all the accidents happen, isn't it, when it pops. The first thing I'm going to do is remove all the fire bricks and the grate and then I'm going to pull out the baffle plate which is at the top here. So 
pudding just comes to check that I've done it all correctly. So guys, as you can see, loads of shite has fallen down. Um, that's I've just pulled the baffle plate out now, which separates the stove from the chimney bit. And I'm now going to go outside, get me brush and get it down there and give it a good... Good... A good... Uh, sh sh poking. I'm looking for the word poking. But first, make sure you close the door and shut all your flaps. I'm going to take the chimney off. This chimney's knackered. I have bought myself a new one from Nantwich. Um, that's the chimney inner. And I got my big trusty brush. Go straight down. Woohoo! So I tend to start off gently, giving the top a little bit of a fiddling, and then I go right in deep. Hey! So I've got a string so that I don't lose it because nothing worse if it gets stuck down there. Once I've eased myself in, I can put my whole arm down there, no problem. Another top tip when you're doing this is don't wear a white top. So once we've finished with the inside of the flue, it's now time to give a little bit of attention to the outer part. Some people tend to neglect this area, but it's one of the most important areas and the most fun. So I have got um, a new chimney. However, this edge here that I found out on top of the chimney, it needs grinding. And the problem is I've not been able to get any petrol for the generator, so I can't run my grinder to grind this off. So for now, for tonight, I'm just uh, gonna put the old chimney back on. But first, I'm just going to get rid of all the crap that's inside it. And once it's all finished off, it's time to clear up the mess you've created. So this is why I said you needed to shut your flaps because everything I've pushed down that flue is now here. So we now have to clear up all this too. And not forgetting to empty the ashtray as well. For future I think it's better to actually put a bin bag inside the fire to catch it as it's falling down. And there we go, all cleaned out and ready to put back together again. I then got the vacuum out and sucked everything up that was left over and give the place a good clean. So like I said, make sure that you are wearing dark clothing when doing it because I've just ruined this top and it cost me four pounds from Primark, so I'm not happy. And the other thing I did was when I was cleaning it, I was ramming it with the poker and trying to get all the bits of crud off the back of the fire and I poked the bloody blanket plate straight out the back and I snapped the thing, you see, so you can't just ram it dead hard. You've got to take care when you are working with things and I've given it too hard a ramming and this has popped out. But I have been on the phone to Regal 2, the people that make my fire and they are, I've had to order a new one so they can get spare parts, which is fabulous. But £28 included the postage, but it's one of them. So when that comes, I'll be fitting that and then I can light it again. But no light in the fire now for two days. Oh my God. But luckily, I've got a fire in my boatsman's cabin. So uh, if it does get really cold, I can light that one. But you see, every job you do on a boat turns into something else, something bigger. So as you can see guys, the blanking plate arrived and I fixed the fire. It, I didn't film the fitting of it because it was a little bit of a faff. I had to hold the back of the fire with some sealant and then screw it from the inside of the fire. So a little bit of a awkward, but it's all fixed, all working fine. It took me five minutes, so it was all right in the end. So just a little reminder, you've got to be gentle when you are doing that because I was ramming it too hard and it poof, popped out the back. So be a little bit gentle when you are working around those areas. So remember guys, just look after your chimneys, look after your stoves and every now and again give it a right good poking.
sort it out. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next Thursday. Take care guys.